All right, let me clean this up for this video. Wow, looks like new. Well, I finally got a hold of one, the highly anticipated brand new Zero Breeze Mark III AC unit. <laughs> I don't get to keep this. This is a prototype. They sent it to me to test out and play with. And after I'm done with my video, I'm supposed to send this to the next ambassador for them to do theirs. So you're probably going to see this exact same unit with the exact same scratches and flaws on it in everybody else's videos. Today, I'm here to answer a very basic question. If you already own the Zero Breeze Mark II, is it worth upgrading to the Mark III? Or if you don't already have a Zero Breeze AC unit, but you know you're going to buy one, should you wait for the Mark III to come out? Or will the Mark II treat you just fine? Now the Mark III isn't slated to be sold to the main public until I believe April or May. I think that's their target date, just in time for summer. But I'm glad that they're sending it right now to their ambassadors for us to test and review. Because if you've been keeping an eye out on the developments of the Mark III and you go on YouTube, you'll find that the only videos that are out there about this are the ones that Zero Breeze themselves released, whether that's their promo video or their demo videos. Well, now that I have this in my possession, I can actually save you from all of the promo videos and give you an honest review about this thing and how well this thing functions. So here I have the two units, the Mark II on this side, the Mark III on this side. They've been kind of promoting that the Mark III is going to be the same size as the Mark II, but I don't really think that that's pretty accurate because the Mark III is definitely bigger. I know that the battery at the bottom is thicker, so it's probably giving it that height. But as far as also the overall girth of the thing, you can tell that the Mark III is definitely bigger and taller. But form factor wise, it's more updated. It has a more futuristic kind of look. It's kind of given off this Star Wars Imperial Star Destroyer Las Vegas Raider Stadium kind of vibe to it, right? Like that's kind of how it looks like. It just feels like this thing is gonna shoot lasers at you. On the Mark III, you have this flap that you can move up and down that will allow you to guide the air whichever way you want it to go. On the Mark II, they don't have that. It just blows in one direction. The only thing that's on here is this little LED display that tells you what temperature this thing is running at. But I don't like the positioning of this because they give you this tube to allow you to direct the air wherever you want it but you basically put it over the front here you put the bolts and now you've covered it this is this way so that you can keep this on the outside of your tent and then kind of just bring the tube to inside your tent that's actually how i like to run it because i don't want this taking up any space inside my sleeping area on the mark three i don't see any kind of bolts or clips where something like this would go on to and i'm hoping that there is a way to get that to do that because I want this, especially that it's bigger, to be outside of my sleeping area and I wanna be able to have a tube to come out and go into the tent. They didn't send me one of these for the Mark III, so I don't know how that's actually gonna get attached. But hopefully when this thing comes out, that question will be answered because that is a big thing for me and it could be a deal breaker if they don't have something like that for this because I love running it like this on the Mark II. Now on the Mark II, everything is pretty much laid out. All of your buttons, all of the functions, and you don't get a display that tells you everything you need to know. The only display you get is this little tiny one here that tells you what degree this unit is running at. Now to turn this thing on, you just press it, and then to change the power of how much is coming in and out, you just press the plus and minus over here. And then below that, you have all of your modes. And then you also have a light where if you press that, you get this nice light around here. You also get this indicator light in the back right now it's blue to tell you this thing is running when it's red that means that it's on standby now on the mark 3 this whole area here is a 
total game changer because you actually get a full display now which will appear right here above that you have all of your buttons and they've been wildly simplified now, I would wish that they would have put some labels to kind of help you remember what button does what because I tend to forget but it's not that hard to figure out to turn this thing on just hold that middle button down and that'll turn this thing on you'll hear a chime and right now it's on rocket mode and if you want to switch modes you just press the button again that'll go to AC then that goes to sleep mode then that goes to your fan and then it goes to humid control so if you want to get rid of the humidity that's inside that area that'll help you do that right now you're seeing H38 humidity level 38% and then you have your care mode then you have your heat mode, which I'm really excited about because I can now use this also as a heating unit. And then right below here, you see this, uh, how much power right now is at four. The button next to that helps you kind of go toggle through one, two, three, four, and then back to one again. And then these two buttons here help you determine what temperature you want to set it at. The setting is at 71 and we can drop that down. Now the button on the very left, that's your light. Just press it one time and you'll get this like green light. Press it again, you get like a brighter green light. Press it again and you get this bluish purple light that kind of strobes in and out like very nicely. So for that calming kind of light effect. And then to press it again, you get like a flashing green light and then it goes back to off. Now one huge change that they made that I'm so glad Zero Breeze listened to because a lot of us had the same complaint is the way the battery attaches to the unit. They would give us this little dongle here and this dongle, I'm sorry to say, is pretty bad. The way this thing kind of comes out, which is so difficult to get your fingers in there to kind of turn it. And I have really thin fingers and I already have a hard time trying to get this thing out. Like I'm having a hard time right now. Then if you lose this thing, there is no way for you to connect the battery to the unit now and you're kind of SOL. Well, the new one, look at this. It's just a plug now. There's also your power input right here. So if you're not using a battery, uh, you would just use an AC power for this AC unit. Then you just plug it directly into that like this and you are pretty much good. Over here you have your release to release the battery from the unit itself. Just press this, slide this off, and this comes right out. Now maybe I'm just not used to it yet, but I had a little bit more trouble getting this to come out because I couldn't figure out which way it goes. Yeah, see, so, okay. No, no, it's not. Oh, backwards, okay. So you can see the mechanism is much different. You have uh, basically these rubber guides that guide it through the slots of the battery and then this thing is what locks it in place, whereas this has a lock right here on the battery. And this one clicks in to this little slot here. But see, that just locks in like this. And then again, from the back. So there you go. Now, comparing batteries, major, major upgrades on the Mark III, and I am loving it. On a Mark II, it's pretty basic. I mean, you have your power button here, and then you have your two USB-As and a USB-C, and then you have this 12 volt that I've never had to use. Up at the top, you have these LED indicators that tells you how much power is left in this battery. But on the new one, you actually have a full display showing you how much battery is left in percentage. It's a lot more visual, a lot easier to see. You also have your power button here. It looks pretty much the same. But then what's even better is they covered up those ports. A lot of times this is outside of my tent. It will get rained on and I'm glad that this is now protected whereas this, it's not. So right here you have one for solar. So if you wanna charge this thing back up with solar, this one does not have that. Then you also have USB-A and then the USB-C. Now on the back, major upgrade on that as well. I've already told you how much I hate this dongle. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore with the new battery because it's pretty much built in. And then if you wanna charge this thing back up, then you just use the same block that you use to run your AC. You plug that into there. As far as handles, on a Mark II, you have one handle here, but it's built in. I love built-in handles because you don't have to worry about them breaking. It's, it's part of the whole thing and you just have to carry it there. Mark III has two handles, but 
they're this kind there is some weight to this thing and so i hope when i'm carrying this i don't want this thing snapping off on both sides i hope that this thing has been made to be rigid and that it's not gonna fall apart because you know that with this one yeah that ain't going nowhere like that's your handle. So let's compare specs. First off, BTUs, that's an important thing. It basically kind of measures how much coolness is coming out of these things. Now, if we're measuring how much coolness comes out of something, then I must be at like 1 million BTUs. Now the Mark II produces about 2,300 BTUs, whereas the Mark III way more than doubles that at 5,280. So you're getting a lot more power with the Mark III. Now if these things are plugged into constant power, like a campsite where you actually have outlets, uh, then Mark III all day. That being said though, if you're not plugged into an outlet like that and you're running off the batteries, then I'm wondering if that higher BTUs is going to drain the battery faster. On the Mark II, you can run it up to about six hours that's the longest i've gotten it on one battery and that was at like a medium setting it wasn't on rocket mode or anything like that and i got about six hours and they're saying that on the mark three you're also going to get about six hours off of the battery so if i'm assuming correctly then they must have increased the capacity of the battery to account for the higher btus but still give you the same exact kind of runtime now as far as coverage the mark ii covers about 40 square feet which is more than enough for our rooftop tent but the mark three they say this can cover from 160 to 250 square feet that's a pretty big area and it's gonna be overkill for a tent but I'm hoping that it can do that so that I can get the tent even cooler or maybe even hotter when I want to use the heat function on this thing so let's compare modes on the mark II, you have four basic ones you have your fan mode which if you want to run this like a fan and not the AC and conserve battery you can put it on fan and it'll help run the battery even longer then you have rocket mode which makes this kind of go at full speed in the very beginning to cool the place down then you have your standard AC mode and then you have your sleep mode which allows this thing to shut down after a specific amount of time same modes on the mark three except you get three brand new ones the first one is humidity which i am excited about we live in florida it's very humid here it gets very humid inside the tent and i would love the unit to kind of help get some of that stuff out and reintroduce like drier air in also this will help kind of clear condensation in your tent overnight next one you have is care mode care mode will keep this at a constant temperature so you don't have to keep coming up and adjusting it so for example if you set it to like 72 this will regulate itself to go up and down to maintain that 72 degrees inside the area that you're in and then finally the one i'm most excited about is the heat mode right now when we go fall and winter camping we're bringing either the portable electric heater or electric blankets or we used to bring the buddy heater which i do not want to bring anymore that thing scares me i know there's some safety features on it but like it's an open flame and propane inside of your tent if this thing can actually heat a space up the way they're saying it will then now i have one unit for every climate that i might go into and that is pretty exciting now as far as noise some people have complained that the mark ii is a bit too loud this one actually produces about 52 decibels and they said that this new one is much quieter and it comes in at 46 decibels now as far as the pricing the mark ii unit by itself is about 999 dollars if you buy it with the battery that comes in total at 1499 dollars the mark iii when this gets sold to the public this is gonna be $1,299 for just the unit and if you buy it with the battery it's gonna be $1,799 total for this whole thing all right so I have both of these units side by side because I want to I want to run some tests number one I want to test battery capacity I'm not looking to see how long each of these batteries will last per se just because that can vary it depends on the temperature outside or how powerful you're running these units at what level and what coolness I'm, I'm looking more for whether or not these batteries will kind of die at the same time right because the mark 3 has higher BTUs than the mark 2 and theoretically that should kill this battery sooner unless they amped up the battery capacity on the mark 3 so that's why i want to 
run both of them at the same time and see if they kind of die at the same time. The second thing I want to test is the drainage. I've had issues with the Mark II kind of pulling and not draining completely, whereas the Mark III is supposed to have an active drain system. So I have the drains coming out of the back and I have it going to a bucket below. I also put a towel down just to protect my table just in case they leak. Uh, and then we're gonna run that and see at the end if any of these are leaking any water. And then third, I wanna test the temperature that's coming out of these vents. It's not gonna be super scientific, this test, right? The ambient temperature in this garage is already 55 degrees. So these are not here to cool the room. All I really wanna see is how comparable the temperature is that's coming out of these, or if the Mark III is actually producing cooler air. So let's jump into it. All right, so the units have been running for about an hour now. So we're gonna check to see the temperature that's coming out of each vent using my digital thermometer. Mark two, that's showing about 55 degrees. And then the Mark three, that's showing about 49.1 degrees. So that's six degrees colder on the Mark three with the exact same setting. So that's pretty impressive. So both batteries are dead after about four and a half hours. The Mark II started to beep at me, so I knew that it was on its last leg, and then they both just kind of died, which is great news because that tells me that the Mark III, despite having more power, can last just as long as the Mark II, which tells me that they upgraded the battery. That was one of my bigger concerns, and now I know that I'm not losing any kind of runtime by switching to a unit that has higher power. One other really cool thing too is that the Mark III, there's a vent on the battery and I could still hear the fan going even with the unit turned off. That's an awesome thing because you want something that'll cool the battery down. The Mark II doesn't have anything like that. It doesn't have any vents, it doesn't have any fans. So something like a battery like this with higher power in it, uh, having it be able to cool is is a really good feature now as far as temperature coming out of these things as you saw earlier the mark three was pumping out six degrees cooler than the mark two which is great now i really want to see the drainage so i've been noticing through this whole test that bucket down there is pretty full like there's a lot of water there and it's coming from the mark three let's take out the drain really quick hmm there is water coming out of there the Mark II, I already know it's wet because I can see it. Yeah, see this has a stream of water coming out of it. So yeah, it looks like they both still have somewhat of a drainage issue, but not as bad as the Mark II. That's the drainage. Worse on the Mark II, but it's still, it's still there on the Mark III. So let's recap. Is the Mark III better than the Mark II? Now, even if I'm sponsored by Zero Breeze, I really tried my best to not be biased here. I, I wanted to really test this thing out because I, I don't want to push a product just because it's newer when an older version of it is better. I mean, that's even how I feel about my cameras. A brand new camera can come out, but if I still enjoy using my older camera better, then I, I'm not going to upgrade. You too, Apple, for the hundredth time in a hundred days, stop notifying me about about that computer update because I am going to decline it every time. But after all the testing and going through all the features, I, I can honestly say I would prefer the Mark III over the Mark II any day. Like I don't lose anything upgrading to the Mark III, but I'm also gaining a ton more stuff. For example, the battery. Like I. Before I was thinking in my head, I'll bring the Mark III on shorter trips because the battery won't last as long and I'll bring the Mark II on the longer trips. Well, if they're both running around the same time, then I'll just rather bring the Mark III. And then the controls on this, I can control more than I could on the Mark II. You can set the temperature you want it to be at and the power that's coming out of it from the lowest all the way to the highest setting. Plus you're getting a bunch of new modes that you didn't have on the Mark II. You have your care mode, which will help regulate the temperature going into the tent. You have humidity control, which will get that condensation out of the tent when it gets really muggy. And you also have heat mode, which is going to
going to be clutch during fall and winter. And then the active drain system, I think that's a huge plus. I mean, yeah, there was still water coming out of this, but it wasn't just gushing out like the Mark II. I feel like the Mark II was still holding all that water in and it wasn't draining it at all. Whereas this, although some water came out, you could see below that the majority of the water from here had already escaped the unit. And then there's all the little things like the plug. It's just a standard plug that you push in. It's not one of those little things you got to push in and turn the little knob and hope that your fingers don't cramp up. And on top of that, the plug is actually built into the battery, which means I don't have to bring that damn dongle anymore. And I don't, I can't even tell you how many times I've either forgotten it at home or lost one of them. And, and before you know it, I can't run my AC. So thank God for that. Now, there are a couple of little things that I, I, I wish could be better or that I hope that they would fix before this actually releases. Uh, number one, the drain system. It does work great, but there was still water in here. So hopefully they kind of address that and really get that thing pumping the water out so that when I lift this, there's no water at all. And then there's also the size. The Mark III is about an inch wider and an inch taller than the Mark II. And then add the thicker battery onto this and you're probably going to get another inch over the Mark II. Just Keep that in mind if space is paramount for you, especially if you've maybe built a custom cubby for your Mark II and that Mark II fits in there like snugly and perfectly, this may not fit in there and you might have to reconfigure some things. And finally, it's not really a con, but more so I just don't know the answer to this question right now because they haven't shown me anything. And that is, I hope that there's a, a tube that can go on the front of this thing because if it does not, that's a huge deal breaker for me. And right now, I don't see anything on here that a tube would attach to. This is not going to be inside my tent. I refuse to have this inside my tent. Space is already limited. This needs to stay outside of the tent and I need that tube to go into the tent to cool the space. So I don't know, hopefully in the next few months or so I get an answer to that question because that is something I definitely need. But that's it, we got through it. Probably a long video, but that's okay. There are no user generated videos comparing the Mark III to the Mark II yet. And so I'm, I'm glad to be able to test this thing out and get it to you guys in hopes that it gives you some insight on a new model that's coming out. Tell me in the comments below, would you buy the Mark II or the Mark III? Or if you already have the Mark II, would you upgrade to the Mark III? But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you smash, actually don't smash, upgrade to the Mark III of that like button, subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell so we can let you be aware of new videos when they come out. And if it moves you, support us on Patreon. It gives you access to all of our videos before everyone else and gives you access to our live streams when we do them. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. Seriously, there is a lot of water in here. I'm gonna go water the plants.